Welcome back to the Sea Dreamer Project. Um, you can see we got a bulletin board and we got some paper plans finally. Uh, he's still working on a couple more things and he wasn't pleased with how these printed out. He thought they were too light so he may be running them again. But for me, for right now, great. So we uh, took an old piece of uh, plywood. I bought some cork tiles, 12 by 12 cork tiles. Double sided tape and uh, threw some staples in them, put them up on the board and put up uh, a few of our um, uh, plan sheets. So uh, now we're working on lofting like we talked about. We're working on lofting the um, the aft part of the bowl where I ran out of width. So we'll uh, I'll grab the camera spinner around so you can see that we've uh, spun the plywood 90 degrees um, so we have a little bit more height to work with and we're working off a true baseline this time so you can see the full bottom of the keel. So let me flip the camera. You can see over here um, I think this is called a keelson. You can see that full thing now and we've got a batten uh, whoop, batten right there that's the um, the rabbit and since we had some more height we we're able to put down the uh, the chine as well couldn't get to the uh, shear on uh, on it but I probably could if I moved it again let me get down low and you can cite that line and when people I think when you're reading books and stuff and they're talking about sliding down the line and seeing if it's a fair curve um, you can really see it when you get down low so let me get down low and you can see it so if you look along those nails you'll see that's a nice fair curve and here's the uh, chine and those nails mark uh, the chine line and all these were pulled off the uh, mixture of the lines plan and the table of offsets to get all the measurements and which allowed me to uh, mark each station and actually up to a s theoretical station 41 which really isn't listed on the plans and that's station 38 and we work down to station 30 that's the width enough that we have you see those little spots and stuff that's the problem with working in these um, these bow roof uh, sheds, when you line them with plastic, the ventilation, it really gets damp in here, so you get condensation, it freezes, and then once you get in here and warm it up, I had the salamander running, it melts, and then it rains inside. So this spring, we're going to work on adding some ventilation to see if we can cure that problem, but for now, we'll deal with it. Not a big deal. So now we're going to set up, and we're going to actually mark the rabbit. We're going to spring that batten uh, through those nails and mark the batten or excuse me, mark the rabbit so uh, we can make the patterns and we'll get to it. Just gonna mark with our uh, red marker here. Um, you can see they're double, na double nailed. That's just to hold that batten in between tight. Um, let it overha overhang uh, a couple of the uh, station marks and then uh, as you move down, you just kind of slide it down. I hold this in place and you'll see this flex a little bit, but since this isn't even really the final because I'm going to be doing this on the actual keel. This is just kind of so we can see it. If you remember from our last video, I said uh, in theory that our patterns from our previous lofting and our patterns from this lofting should match up. Now, since we overlap stations, we can really test that theory, and I am happy to report that it has worked out. So, like station 34, 34, and you see that rabbit running right through the mark on the previous lofting. So, you know, a nice double check on our measurements. So now I just have to make a pattern similar to that to cover stations um, 36 and 38. And I'll probably go out to the transom up here as well. So good check. Keep plugging along. I almost forgot to show you guys the, the wood we bought for our, uh, our boat here. So this is uh, one boat, some assembly required. Um, it's larch. 
random lengths. Um, the stuff in the front here, seven inches wide, that's um, six quarter, which is an inch and a half thick. Um, that's going to be for the keel. And over down here, um, five inches wide, that's eight quarter, two inches thick. That is going to be for the frames. And then these are the floor timbers, which are three and a half inches. It was like 15 quarter or something by nine inches wide. And I'm actually going to cut these down to seven inches. One of the sets of plans I looked at, well, they were nine inches wide, so I kind of misordered it at nine inches. But it'll, you know, bigger is better. It'll still work. I'll just have to cut it down. So we're in good shape. Um, the sawmill I bought it from was an Amish guy uh, down in Jasper, New York. Um, he's a nice young guy. He's uh, just kind of starting off in the sawmill business, and you, you can kind of see it. Um, there's a few of these that uh, the cuts are not, um, both faces aren't parallel. There's kind of a taper to them. Not a big deal. You know, he, they're, they're thicker than I need. So when I run them all through the planer anyway, it'll get them down to size, and it'll work out fine. But, you know, he threw in a lot for free because you can like this one right here you can see it's got the edge with the sap wooden bark which really i can't use but he didn't charge me for it so at you know and still at 60 cents a foot i was uh very pleased uh and the other nice thing is that you know i've bought lumber before from mills and mennonite communities amish communities uh regular capitalist uh sawmills and you know you tell them you want something that's uh you know seven inches wide they don't they give you at least seven inches wide you know so you'll get something that's nine inches or seven and a half or eight inches it's all over the place but he literally cut these down so they're all seven inches wide and same for the five inch stock you know i was expecting a minimum of five inches wide with random you know kind of random widths all two inches thick but he cut them to my finished dimension which is a huge time saver i'm you know i'm still got to mill the edges but that was going to be done either way. So normally sawmills don't do that, or if they do it, it's an extra charge. So nice young guy. I'll try to uh, put a link up with his contact information if you're in the upstate New York area. You know, he's just kind of starting out. Um, real nice kid. Um, I'm pleased with the product, how long it took to get it. This is a lot of wood. This is probably, I ordered 1100 This is probably 12, 1250 board feet uh, just because of the extras he threw in. But I'll try to put a link up to uh, so you can get in contact with him if you need any lumber. Um, he sells white pine, larch, and something else. I can't remember. But very good stuff. It's still green. I put my uh, meter on it. Um, it's over 20% uh, moisture content, uh, which is it's probably right at 20 or just over 20 because it does burn. I had a few bark pieces that I burned, um, and it didn't get foamy on the ends or you know wet leaking out. So it, it's it's pretty dry. I'm sure you know in a maybe a month or two I'll be within the uh, the parameters that I need because the you don't need furniture dry you don't need you know six eight percent dry um, if we get down to sixteen percent you know eighteen percent that's fine and the glue instructions even say that that's fine too so pretty happy. So we're just making sure all our pieces are on their marks and then we're laying our patterns on and like we talked about in our previous video they mark our station mark our rabbit and it will allow us when we do our setup when the keels all laminated up to be uh, that much simpler and accurate and another way we can double check our measurements Doing the transom, this was really just for fun, just to see, just to see what it's going to look like. I, I don't think this is going to provide any real benefit in the final, but it'll be neat to see when it's all mocked up. And that's it. We have our patterns marked now for almost the entire, uh, the entire keel, just the bow section, and I really think that's going to come together with. Uh, the red rosin patterns that I made there and lining up with station two that we got on the paper. So I'm happy. Uh, we want to give a shout out to uh, sbseeker.com. Um, you should check out their YouTube channel because uh, I posted over there and they uh, he uh, subscribed to our YouTube channel 
which gave us a lot of hits and that gave us uh, like over 130 new subscribers. So we really appreciate that. Uh, so thanks to Doug and the uh, team over at SV Seeker. You should check them out. It's a very cool build. They're doing theirs in steel. So it's really, really neat. And that's it. You know, I'm still working on this cold and, you know, I, it just, it's making me lazy, you know. And, and, and in the grand scheme, you know, I love sitting on the couch too, watching TV as much as the next guy. Um, and I love to shop for the different components and buying tools and equipment. Um, I like the logistics of it, you know, but sometimes uh, it takes some motivation to get out and actually do the work, you know, and I know what it is. It's I'm, I don't know what I'm doing and I'm afraid to make a mistake. And, um, but when I get out here and you know, get off my butt and get moving, I have a good time and I enjoy myself and it's fun and, um, you know, we'll figure out things out as we go. And I need to remind myself that, and, you know, and if you're working on something too, you know, get off the couch. And then just go give it a shot. You know, you got to start with that uh, first step. And it is fun getting out here. So we took the time to uh, loft out the uh, bow of the boat as well. We're using the uh, same lofting floor. Obviously, you can see the uh, transom end of the, of the loft. And now um, the bow section here. So the bottom of the uh, bow section is in black. And the bottom of the keel. And the rabbit is still in red. So you can see where they crisscross in the center. But it gives you an idea of the transition and the stem and all these uh, measurements were pulled off um, our drawings uh, pretty straightforward I mean just the way you look at it um, and if, I don't know if I can swing over here you know using using these and ex particularly this construction view um, you know you see on the bottom there's some really fine print with uh, you know measuring different lines from the water m line from the baseline all that stuff um, you know, just taking your time and, and, and verifying the measurements and doing things in pencil first before you go to marker, and it's not that bad. So, pretty happy. We're going to get to it uh, next weekend. This is it for now. We uh, appreciate you watching. Appreciate you supporting us. You can send us an email at contact at cdreamerproject.com, or you can go to our webpage at uh, www.cdreamerproject.com, or check us out on Facebook if you search on Facebook. And obviously you know about YouTube here. Always looking forward to hearing from people, your questions, your comments, your advice. Because um, you know, I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So thanks for watching. We will see you guys next time.